Our scripture uh, reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separated from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking it was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I've not yet ascended to my father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the good news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. From time to time, historians and others who uh, study uh, uh, human events and uh, uh, human history uh, uh, put together lists of the most important this, the most important that, the most important of the other. Uh, A fellow by the name of, and I can't read the name from there, the Frank Thackeray and John Fielding put together a list of Ten events that changed the world in the 20th century. And on that list included the bombing of Hiroshima at the end of the Second World War that ended the Second World War, the landing on the moon in July of 1969, the creation of Israel 1948, the stock market crash of 29, the assassination of Duke Ferdinand, which uh, started uh, the First World War, the fall of the Berlin Wall, the discovery of penicillin, the D-Day invasion on June 6, 1944, the October Revelation, Revol- Revolution, rather, which started the, uh, the, uh, the rise of communism in Russia, the fall of the Tsarist Empire and the rise of communism, and then December, December what, 7th, 1941, thank you, I wasn't around when that happened, uh, 1941, uh, which began, began the Second World War. All events that were transforming in the world in which we live. But this morning, we're here to celebrate and to recall perhaps the most important event that, we got it, we got it, Walt, we got it. The most important event that transformed, the most important event that ever occurred in the history of the world, and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. No other event in history has shaped the world like his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. It has been shaped and formed the course of humanity. It has made life better. It has made life have more meaning. This morning, as we think about, as we consider 
the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And consider it from the standpoint of the world-changing and the life-changing implications that the good news of Easter has available to us who embrace it and who live it uh, by faith. Uh, the first thing I think we can safely say is that because of the resurrection, clearly the disciples were changed. The disciples were changed human beings. It has been said that the most important evidence of the resurrection is not just, and I'll say just, the empty tomb, because most of us don't have the opportunity to see, didn't have the opportunity, will never have the opportunity to see the empty tomb. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle Paul, writing a few years after that event, talks about how that Jesus appeared to Simon Peter. He appeared to all of the rest of the close disciples. He appeared to the women, although for some reason Paul doesn't record that. I'm not quite sure why he doesn't include the women in that list of characters. Then he says he appeared at one time to over 500 people. He appeared to James his brother, the brother of Jesus, and he finally appeared in person to the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. Those people were eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses either of the empty tomb or eyewitnesses of the risen Christ. Unless somehow God gives us a special vision, a special experience where we see the risen Christ, we're not going to have that to count upon. But we do have the witness of those people whose lives have been changed, whose lives have been transformed. And the disciples were those kind of men. They went from being timid to being bold. They went from being selfish to being compassionate. Their faith was such that they were willing to risk home, family, life, reputation, everything to declare this message. Their lives were changed, were transformed, and people saw the difference that that made, saw the difference that their experience, that their faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ made. Dr. Luke, writing in the book of Acts in chapter 4, talks about John, Peter and John, being carried in before the, the Jewish Sanhedrin. And in the course of the examination, some of the members of the, of the Jewish ruling council talk amongst themselves. And Luke says, they were astonished, but they took note that these men had been with Jesus. That Jesus was present. They had been present with Jesus, and now Jesus was present in their lives through his resurrected glory, and that made a difference. They were changed. In the summer of 1978, there was a tragic crash of a military aircraft, of an Air Force aircraft in Saunders Storm Air Force Base in Greenland, in the, in the country of Greenland, uh, the island country of Greenland. 22 people were killed in this tragic accident. A young lieutenant was assigned the task of being the mortuary officer. And he and the chaplain organized volunteers, because the, the station was not very well staffed, and, and there, there were certain people that had to be on duty, and just a very few people left over who weren't assigned to duties. So they needed volunteers from the other military personnel, from their families, from others that they knew in the community. They asked for volunteers to come and help with the, with the gruesome task of picking up the mangled bodies and trying to identify the persons so that they could be sent home to their loved ones and given a proper burial. They worked, and they worked with this awful task all day long and even on into the evening until they were finally finished. And, 
And everyone left, you know, just shocked from that experience, in silence, so to speak. Later that night, after midnight, the chaplain who was back in his quarters heard a knock on his door, and he went, and there, standing at his door, was that second lieutenant. And he said, I've got to talk to you. And he invited him in. And he said, you know, as we were picking up those bodies today, I realized after a while that the only people who were out there helping us were Christians. The only people who were willing to do that were Christians. He said, I have been an unbeliever all of my life. I have been one of those who have scorned and made fun of other people because of their faith. But I have seen something in the lives of those people today that I know I want, I need. And the chaplain prayed with that second lieutenant and he became a Christian. He became a disciple of Jesus Christ. And in fact, he did something that had never been heard of before. He asked for his tour of duty at that station to be extended for another year. Another year in Greenland. Oh boy. Why? So he could tell the story of his experience with those people and seeing the message of Jesus lived in their lives, how they had been changed, and then how his life had been changed as well. Because of the resurrection, not only were the disciples changed, but we understand that our lives as well can be changed. We can become different people. We can become new creation in faith in Jesus Christ. Secondly, because of the resurrection, Walt, you may have to help me again here. My clicker is not clickering. Because of the resurrection, our view of death, our view of death has changed. Back in the mid to late 1980s, uh, we were assigned to a, appointed to a church in western Defiance County up in northwest Ohio. Yes, in the little village of Hicksville. There is a Hicksville, Ohio. And it is a Hickville, I'll tell you, yes. But while we lived there, my wife worked for the Defiance County Health Department. Her role was that she was a home health slash hospice nurse, and she drove all over the county in the six years that she held that position. She was in the homes of 50 or more families, I'll say, providing hospice nursing care, walking with them as they went through the process of death and dying. And over and over again, she would come home after the person had passed away and say, I just can't help but think about how important it is to have faith at a time like this. She says, because it makes all the difference in the world. I see those families who are facing death and walking through the experience of death where they have faith and where there is no faith. And it is demonstratively different. There is grief, there is pain on both parts, but one group faces it with hope, and the other faces it only with despair. It's over, this is the end, and that's it, and there's no more. But the persons of faith say, this is not the end, this is just the end of the beginning. And death is the door by which we walk into eternity because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul, writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, said, Death has been swallowed up in victory. 
O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of sin is death, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory over death through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the resurrection, we can have a different understanding and a different point of view when it comes to death. Thirdly, we can say that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, certainly our understanding and our view of who Jesus is, of Jesus, has been changed, has been changed. Matthew chapter 13 identifies part of the problem. Jesus came to his hometown. He went to the synagogue and he began to teach and he had done some miraculous signs, some mighty works there as well. And the response of the majority of the people in that community was, where did this man get these things? and this wisdom, and this power that he, he is displaying. Is he not the carpenter's son? Is he not, is not his mother Mary here with us, and, not our, and are not his brothers James, and Joseph, and Simon, and Judas, and his sisters with us? Where did this man? Their understanding was that he was just a man, just another Smart man, just another man who could conjure up some magic tricks. Later, when Jesus was drugged before the Jewish ruling council and before Pontius Pilate to put on, be put on trial, they said things like, he claims to be a king. He claims to be the son of God with a big old question mark hanging over the top of that. The identity of Jesus was questioned throughout his lifetime and continues to be questioned by many, by many in the world today, but to those who have faith, who believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We, like Thomas the Apostle, declare, my Lord and my God, you are my Lord, and you are my God. We fulfill the hope that the Apostle John had in his heart when he wrote his gospel that we would come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the Son of God, and that by believing we would have life in his name. Because of the resurrection, our view of Jesus had changed. In 1982, in 1982, Vice President George Bush. Now, you had to go back a few years to the first George Bush. Vice President George Bush was sent as the United States representative to the funeral of the former Soviet leader, Leonid Brezhnev. Leonid Brezhnev. And something happened at that funeral that, well, Bush was just astonished by, but very pleased to see that it had happened. Brezhnev's widow stood beside the casket, the open casket, as the service was concluding. She stood there very silently, very somberly, as people filed by and filed out. And just as the soldiers were turning to begin the process of lowering the lid, she very quickly reached over and made the sign of the cross over her husband's body. An act of rebellion, an act of faith in the, in the very center of a secular atheistic power witnessing to her hope, witnessing to her belief that Jesus really was the Son of God. And what he had to say and what he did makes all the difference in the world. Because of the resurrection, our understanding, our view, our faith in Jesus is different, is different. 
In John chapter 20 that we read just a few moments this morning, uh, just a few moments ago this morning, uh, Mary Magdalene hangs around after uh, uh, Peter and John had showed up at the tomb. Mary Magdalene hangs around, and she looks into the into the tomb one more time and she sees some angels standing there and they engage in a conversation and she turns and she sees this person standing there. And John says she believed that he was the gardener. Now this is one of a number of pictures that I found on the internet that proclaims that that scene, but I found a few, maybe I should have used one of those, uh, from the uh, uh, medieval or Renaissance artists uh, from Dutch background that shows Jesus with a, with a gardener's hat on. One of them has a hoe in his hand. I'm not really sure that was the way it was, but nevertheless, she mistook him to be a gardener. And it says that he simply spoke her name. He said, Mary, and her eyes were opened, and she understood, and she knew that it was Jesus who was standing before him. The Spirit of God, I pray that the Spirit of God may touch you, that the Spirit of God may call your name, if he's not already done so, and open the eyes of your heart that you may understand. Christ is alive. Christ is alive. And he's standing right here among us this morning. He stands beside us and he lives inside us by faith every day. And because of the resurrection, Our lives can be different. Our lives can be transformed. Our lives can be changed from darkness to light. Because of the resurrection, our understanding and the way we view death can be changed from fear and dread and deep sadness to peace and even joy at the experience of glory. Our understanding of who Jesus is. He is not just another man. He's not just another wise teacher. He's not just another religious leader amongst a world filled with religious teachers, but that he indeed was the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing we can have life in his name. The resurrection of Jesus Christ makes all the difference in the world. Paul said in that same 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, our faith is in vain. But, he affirmed, Christ has been raised. That brings peace into our hearts and that is cause for us to rejoice on this special Sunday morning, to the glory of God. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that we do have this opportunity to rejoice and celebrate this glorious Easter morning. We pray that the Spirit of God will speak, that Jesus speaking through the power of the Spirit will speak to each one of us our name and say, I'm here, I'm alive, and that by faith it will transform our lives, our understanding, and the way we feel about death, remove the fear of death, and give us a fullness of assurance of who you are, that we may follow you and find life in your name. Amen. Amen.